Pass 16. This was what Jesus said. The Bible says, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. Uh, New Living Translation said, Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. Uh, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. So, now, go to the next verse. And his servants uh, at supper time to say, and sent his servant at the supper time to say to those who were invited, come, for all things are now ready. Okay. Go to the last that verse that we read just now. Okay. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. Come, the banquet is ready. Quickly. This was Jesus Christ trying to illustrate the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is like a man that organized a wedding banquet. It's like a man that organized a, wed a wedding banquet. Quickly, the first thing he said, he said, a certain man, a certain man, he made a great banquet. The next thing he did, that was a certain man, number one. Number two, he made a great banquet. Number three, he invited many people. What did he do? He invited many people. So there was a man. And what did he do? This man organized and arranged a great banquet. Not just little one, not just a tiny one, a great banquet. And number three, he invited many. He invited many. Hmm. So where are we going? So a man, a child of God, a Christian, is like that man. A Christian, a born-again Christian, or a minister, a Christian worker, somebody who has understanding of their salvation, is like that man who had, or who is making, or who organizing a great banquet. So quickly, I have this question to, to answer this morning. So why do you organize a banquet? Why do, we, why do we organize banquets? Number two, what do people stand to gain when you organize a banquet? What do you, what do you stand to gain in a banquet? What does the organizer, you know, uh, stands to gain in a banquet? Then I think that what do people do in a banquet? And again, those who attend the banquet, what did they stand to gain? What did they stand to gain in a banquet? And what does those who fail to attend a banquet, what do they stand to lose as well? Praise God. Hallelujah. And again, last one is that why do is it that people always love banquets? <laughs> How many of us love banquets? You know what I was imagining this morning? I was thinking I will have time. Is that during Sunday school I will just rush to KFC, get a lot of variety. And uh, but I was looking at time. So that you'll be able to, I want you to really, really understand this morning. Praise God. 
So banquet or banqueting a ministry or church is almost the same thing. <laughs> in fact, the Bible says in the book of Songs of Songs, that was one of the songs we were to sing before this morning. Songs of Solomon or Songs of Songs, uh, chapter 2, verse 4. You know, he brought us to this banqueting hall and his banner over us is love. The Bible says he brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me is love. God brought us to this banqueting hall. So a church is a banqueting hall. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> a church is a what? It's a banqueting hall. It's a banqueting house. And his banner over us is love. Amen. So quickly. If you read Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. Are we there? Okay. The Bible says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made what? A marriage for his son. That's, if you read that, other version it says, Who made a wedding banquet for his son. He said, The kingdom of heaven is like. So, church, which is the kingdom of heaven here on earth, is like a banquet. It's like a banquet. So quickly, the first, I ask a question. Why do we organize a banquet? Number one, a banquet is in honor of someone very important. Anytime you see a banquet, it is in honor of someone very important. So you don't just say overnight, just wake up, oh, I'm just throwing party. For what? Nothing. It's in honor of someone very important. Luke chapter 5, verse 29. Luke chapter 5, verse 29. Okay. The Bible says, and Levi made him a great feast in his house, in his own house. And there were a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with him. This was, okay, let me read this other version now. Later, Levi had a banquet in his house with Jesus as the guest of the honor, as guest of honor. Did you see that? As a guest of honor. Many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with him. You see, it was in honor of Jesus. So a banquet is always done in honor of someone very important. So church is in honor of God, is in honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not in honor of any human body, anybody. It's not in the honor of a pastor, a founder, a president, anybody. It's in honor of God the Almighty. And that's why any church where God is not supreme, I will tell you, please leave quickly. So the church is like a banquet. Number two. It is also done if a banquet is in honor, is done to celebrate an important event, just like in this case. That, like that Matthew 22 we read, it was for a wedding of a, of a priest, a priest. A king was organizing, organized a banquet for his son's wedding. So Luke chapter 15, Luke 15, verse 23. Luke 15, verse 23. Are we there? 
Luke 15, verse 23. This was what happened after the prodigal son came back home. The Bible says, and bring him, bring uh, hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Another version say, and kill the calf we have been fattening. <laughs> we must celebrate with a feast. So when you talk of a banquet, it is always done. Number one, in the honor of someone very important. Number two, it is also done to mark some important event. It is done to mark an important event. It is done to mark an important event. Then again, a banquet could be held, you know, to just say goodbye. You know, when you are, I know people would have organized uh, a good, uh, uh, great, some of my seniors, when we were living in Nigeria, uh, who organized a very nice, uh, wonderful uh, dinner. Send off. Yeah, dinner with their family, which was a great uh, honor, praise God. Amen. Yeah, so it was, uh, I remember my Zona pastor and my Provisha pastor at different times, you know, you know, organize uh, just to say bye. Praise God. You can see example of that in Genesis chapter 29. Genesis 29, when someone important is living, uh, Genesis 29, verse 21. Okay. The Bible says, And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Yes, next. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made what? Yes. He made a feast. Why? Jacob was about to go. So a feast might be to say a bye-bye. And also, it could also be to mark a new beginning. Like that is one of the major reasons why you do reception at wedding. <laughs> Maybe many people don't even know why. It is to mark to celebrate what a new beginning. Is to mark how many people you see they do reception for divorce <laughs> because it's not a good beginning. You don't see people celebrate, we throw in party, invite everybody, let's do party because uh, we want to separate. Nothing like that. Do you see even here, like in Western world, we now have what is called baby shower. Why? We want to welcome in a new life, a new baby. So people do feasts, I mean, uh, banquets. To mark a new beginning. To mark new beginnings. Praise God. All right. That was one of the reasons why Jesus had to attend the wedding in Cana of Galilee in John chapter 2. Because they were a new beginning. And that was why when their wine, instead of their celebration to be mad with sorrow, Jesus intervened and changed the situation. Quickly, what are some warnings we must be aware of? The first warning in a banquet, about banquet, is that it is not for yourself. So the church is not for any mortal man. Praise God. It is not for any mortal man. Any church that is surrounded and it's basically based on a mortal man. I don't think it's the church of God anymore. Praise God. So it is because the banquet is for the Jesus. The Bible said he said this parable to illustrate the kingdom. 
So, and a banquet is always done in honor of someone of significance. So, church is for Jesus. Church is by Jesus, for Jesus, I to Jesus. Thank you. Church is by Jesus. He came by Jesus. Because no human God, no human being died for anybody. It was Jesus that paid with his own blood. God purchased us with the blood of Jesus. So it is centered around him. That's why the Bible says when you know Philip was preaching when he met the Ethiopian, you know. The Bible says he preached Christ. What did he preach? Christ. He didn't preach. Ah, hey, in, in Jerusalem. Oh, 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 if you see on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. Ah, this happened. Miracles were happening. Ah, at the beautiful gate. Oh, this happened. Uh, at the at which this this gate, uh, temple gate. Oh, you know this happened. That happened. They were not just telling. It wasn't just telling their testimonies of. Uh, but what was happening in Jerusalem? What did he do to them? What did he do to him? He told him about Christ. And the same thing happened when he went to Samaria. He did not preach. He didn't tell them story, story. It was not story, story. Do you know he had a lot of story to tell? Yeah, he had it. There is a lot. If you, if you imagine you are in that church in, in, in a in, in Jerusalem, you saw those mighty move of God. You saw the day Ananias and Sabera boom died. You saw crippled, lame, all of them walking. But when Philip went to Samaria to preach, what was he teaching them? He preached Christ. He preached what? He wasn't telling story, story. Ah, in Jerusalem. Oh, you need to meet Pastor Peter. Ha! If you preach like this, fire will fall. You need to meet. Uh, he was not telling about that. Because not about those people. It is about who? God. It's about God. It's about God. Let's read Zechariah chapter 7, verse 6. Zechariah 7, 6. Zechariah, if you're on your way to the to the New Testament, just shut by you. Okay. Zechariah 7, 6. The Bible says, and when you did eat, and when you did drink, did not ye eat for yourself and drink for yourselves. This was God challenging them. He said, whenever they are doing all their first their, their, their banquet, they centered it around themselves. You know, many places today have been centered only about around human beings. And I love this NIV, I have a new living translation. It says, and even now in your holy festivals. Aren't you eating and drinking just to please yourselves? So, worship must never be around any human body, anybody. The choir must not sing just for themselves to be seen, to be, to be, to be celebrated. The usher who is not conducting themselves just because I say, ah, I respect that woman, ah, I respect that sister. Or the teacher, the, the Bible teacher and the, the choir or the pastor is not just doing everything. You know, it's a holy festival. But yet, it was centered around them. Said, How holy is it again? So it's no longer holy. So we must be careful this morning. And that we will continue in this series by the grace of God. Because this is just the beginning, this is just the foundation. We 
we must be careful in our service to God that it centers around who? God. It is all about God. It is all about Christ. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. Somebody say, ah, well, won't I have a gain? Yeah, you will have gain. If you do it genuinely for Him and unto Him, He will reward you. That 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 is that is a sure banker. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we must never allow this issue of show. <laughs> it's not about ourselves, so we should avoid showing, you know, show off. And there is no competition. Do you know it was because of show off, that's where competition used to arise. So I want to outdo uh, Pastor X. I want to, out, you know, so everybody is now, so, and that's the beginning of carnality. Because, the, because you are trying to do, how to do the other person. So even when the Holy Spirit is not telling you to do some certain things, <laughs> because, <laughs> because the, motive, the motive was it was wrong. So what happened? We, you know, we now just, we just allow, we just start leading ourselves. God have mercy. <laughs> God have mercy. Amen. Oh, praise God. <laughs> So this morning, we will stop here this morning. We will continue next week by the good, I mean, uh, uh, next month. Praise God. So I want to encourage us this morning. How is uh, a banquet uh, how is a banquet organ uh, conducted? Have you ever seen a? <laughs> Go back to that slide. Look at how beautiful this is. Uh, I was trying to look for the, the, the one of the video or pictures of one of the morning section, breakfast section, while I was away. Very massive place. And uh, you will just imagine heaven. And you are just sitting there. And uh, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. And good chef are just coming to serve you over and over. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the first day I was, I, I want to fast. But I, I said, okay. Then somebody said, ah, don't waste you. If you want to fast, they pack it for you. I just put it in your room. And the fridge in your I said, yeah, okay. And there's a microwave inside. Okay, all right, that's okay. So the next day I didn't break my fast. Uh, I avoided the temptation. <laughs> so, but the point is that the organization, the everything is deliberate. Nothing is left to uh, late minutes planning. Nothing is left to uh, chance. It is well planned. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads down this morning. The first prayer we want to pray this morning. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back from the way of worship. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. I wanted to ask God this morning for mercy. 
Is there anything we have been doing that is not all about him? I say, Lord, forgive me this morning. Oh, you know, now people give offering not about him. People worship not about him. People test give testimony for everything is just about them. But that's not true. That's not right. It is all about him. It is all about Jesus. It is all about the one that died for our sin. It's all about him. It's all about him. It has nothing to do with us. Father, this morning we are saying we are sorry. In any way, oh God, that we have not given you due glory. In any way, oh God, that we have not centered around you. We are sorry this morning in the name of Jesus. We say, show us mercy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, all our service, all our worship, everything that we have been doing in your kingdom, in and outside the church, that we have been so selfish, it has been centered only and only around us. Please show us mercy. Amen. Show us mercy, oh God. Amen. It is all about you, oh Lord. It is all about you, Father. Because thine is the glory. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the church. The church is yours, oh God. Not the church of any man. Therefore, oh God, we're sorry in the name of Jesus. Amen. Show us mercy, oh God. Amen. Refocus us from this moment. Amen. That everything we do and live our life, we all centered around you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. All right, let's get out. Let's give our offering to the Lord this morning.